Hey everybody, it's your boy Serge Dragon. Welcome back to another edition of the Heavens Monsters Podcast. Today, me and my friends on video chat will be covering SmackDown on May 8th. So here we go. With me is Mike Henry. That's me. And Andre Mitchell. Yo. So, boys, what did you think? Uh, get your thoughts on Monday as well as NXT. What are your thoughts, Mikey? I know you want your two cents. Yeah, my, my two cents for Monday Night Raw is Raw was all out brawl between Oscar, Shane Baker, and Nia Jax. Oh, you talking that? You got that hat. Let me see if I can cut my video. There you go. Yeah, cut my video off. We yeah. on um, Facebook Messenger. Ah, oh, what the hell, Andre? <laughs> okay, back to you, Mikey. Go ahead. As I was saying, my two cents is it was an all-out brawl between Oscar, Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax. And it was just a, honestly, it was just a uh, bout between them. There was no match. And it was broken up by MVP. Another two cents. Another two cents. This one's for NST. Rhea Ripley is back. Yeah, Rhea Ripley's back, bro. And we need to get our hands on the Charlotte player. Right now, she's got to deal with Eel Shirai. Yeah, Eel Shirai was pissed. I mean, you can't, you can't play for being pissed. No. So, let's go ahead. I got uh, another phone. Eel Shirai went, but... Go ahead, say that again. Like I said, Eel Shirai... Berserk, berserk. Went berserk, yes, she did. Like I said, berserk. Mm -hmm. You are breaking up, bro. You got good Wi-Fi. Yes, I got Wi-Fi. That's good. All right. So let's go ahead and kick off SmackDown with the match between Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. A heated battle finally collided between these two. And honestly, it ended very poorly. With Sonya uh, Deville getting the tights and winning in a schoolgirl pinfall. Oh, my God. God damn. Your thoughts, Mikey? Uh, I was hoping Fanny Rose could get her hands on her former best friend turned bitter rival, but... Despite the bad leg, Mandy Rose made a great comeback, but, oh, man, I I, I know Xavier Hill's going to leave a comment below. Yeah. You, Andre? I haven't had a chance to see it, but as soon as I get off, I'm going to get all caught up with SmackDown, so. Surprised you ain't watching that right now. We're doing this at f uh, break of freaking midnight Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. Next, we have a eight-man tag team match between New Day and Lucha House Party versus Miz and Morrison, as well as the Forgotten Sons. Ultimately, this match would end in the favor of the Miz getting the drop on Lince Dorado and hitting him. With the face uh, skull crushing finale and getting his team the win, but at Money in the Bank it will be a fatal four way tag team match where it's everyone for themselves, including the fact that the New Day don't necessarily have to be involved in the pinfall to lose the match. So this is going to be interesting. Who are you hoping to win in this match, my brothers? New Day. I hope the New Day. New Day. New Day's going to retain. No so. Question. So that's three on New Day to retain the title. That's good. So how do you feel about the Miz getting the drop on Lince Dorado? Oh, my God. There's, oh, my, oh, my God. It looks like the 
this year are back in the win count, but they won't win. They will not win the SmackDown titles. Uh uh. You, uh, you, Andre. That was just messed up in a call for our buddy. Next up, we also have the fact that we would have a one-on-one -on -one competition. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't one-on-one. -on -one. It was a tag team women's match between Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Lacey Evans and Tamina. I'm trying to remember how that match ended. If I remember correctly. Hold up, let me clip this. Yep, the winner would be Tamina and Lacey Evans on account that there was a... Uh, hold up. That damn. Am I still recording? Oh, yeah, dang. Talk about taking a fall. My phone can take it. I hit the bottom of this... Uh, what do you call it? Camera prompter. Triangle looking thing. And in which case, Tamina got the win, thanks to the outside interference going on with Lacey Evans and the two heels best friend. What the fuck? <laughs> Andre, what are you doing? What's this filter? And I put it on the other side. Hello. Andre, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm just. Oh, you want a spa day. That's what you want. You want a spa day. Yeah. It wouldn't hurt, man. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. For real. Shout out to my boy Ruby. My bird. My bird. In which case, knowing the fact that Bailey is going to get uh, going up against Tamina, who do you hope to win? Tamina for her first singles title or title in general in WWE, or you want Bailey to retain? Tamina, she's got to win. She's got to win. I'm going to go with Tamina this one. You, Andre? Uh, I kind of want Bailey to win, but I kind of want Tamina to win her first title, you know? Right? That's what I'm feeling, too. There you go. Chris Petrie has joined the crew at midnight. Um, 12.30 midnight. Woohoo! So, Chris, this is where we're at. We already covered the fact that uh, Mandy Rose lost to Sonya Deville in a schoolgirl pinfall, as well as... Damn, let me turn that down. As well as Lindsay Dorado gets Skull Crush finale with The Miz in a Eight way, I mean, in that eight man tag on SmackDown, as well as Tamina getting the win in it with her partner Lacey Evans against Bailey and Sasha Banks. What do you take from all that? Uh, I think uh, Sonya, Sonya, the, Sonya Bill got the victory. I think she was uh, pulling on the tights. Yep, schoolgirl. Yeah. Uh, Manny couldn't believe it. She lost. And, uh, uh Lucha House Party and, uh, New Day. New Day were falling victim by the Forgotten Son and the Miz, Miz and Morrison. Miz and Morrison. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. I just starting to catch on, I'm sorry to say. And then Tommy and Tamina got pinned uh, Sasha Banks. I mean, yeah, Sasha Banks is in the losing streak right now. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So next on the list is the fact that when after hold up, my phone's about to slide right off my lap. Okay, so right after. Mandy and Sonya Deville's match 
Otis was right there trying to handle Mandy Rose. So he didn't hear the announcement that King Corbin made on how he thinks Hold up. On how he thinks about Otis and everybody else winning. He said rude things. So when Daniel Bryan and Drew Gulak meet up with him, he's like, did you hear what King Corbin said about you? No, I was with Mandy. Oh, walk with us, my friend. Ultimately, it was their job to find a third man for their six-man tag team match against King Corbin, Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura. And they found it in the powerhouse, Otis Dozovich. Since he wasn't scheduled to fight anyway. In this match, I'm trying to see who won. Do you remember, Chris? Okay, I'm lagging. Yeah, go ahead. Who won that match in the six-man tag? I think uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, Drew Gulag and, and Otis. I'm checking. Give me a sec. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. No, I remember. For the first time in a long time, Deep Six was landed on Drew Gulak and actually got King Corbin the pin. We have not seen the Deep Six. Usually it was end of days that got Corbin the win for his matches, but it was Deep Six, another heavy move used on uh, Drew Gulak to get the win. I, I remember that. You remember that, Chris? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, you were hoping they won, but they didn't. And afterwards, that match, it was pure chaos between Daniel Bryan, Otis, and King Corbin. None of the other guys even bothered to interfere because they were just going for the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase to make their statement that they were going to win it this Sunday, which is today. Hey, hey. So... Ultimately, Daniel Bryan was struggling with Corbin, and when Otis got in, Otis was actually trying to climb the ladder, but his weight, his over 300 pounds weight, kept breaking the, each and every step. No matter which step he used, he kept breaking it. So he ended up getting jumped by Corbin and Daniel Bryan, and Corbin climbed up the ladder and took down the briefcase, smiling as his music would be playing. And the announcers, Michael Cole and Corey Graves, were uh, saying, could this be the scene we see this Sunday and have King Corbin a two-time Mr. and the Money in the Bank winner? Your thoughts, bro? King Corbin has no chance. Yeah, I mean, he's going to win. You, Chris? King Corbin sucks. <laughs> uh, you got the witch uh, filter. And you, Chris? I, I'm praying King Corbin do not win the Money in the Bank contract because he because he failed last year, but he had the Money in the Bank contract. That's right. He was the winner for last year. Yeah. If he won it, he'd be in the same league as CM Punk, who won it two years in a row. There you go. Okay. So, with that said, that was the end of the match. Uh, did I miss anything, Chris? Uh, the hacker? Yeah, the hacker made another appearance, but... Damn, he mentioned a name, too. At the end of his little montage, there was a name that popped up. Ava. Ava. I think it was Ava. Who the fuck is Ava? Something. He was. He mentioned somebody's name, and I'm like, "Who?" Mm -hmm. He has his eyes on all the tag team people. He's not focusing on anybody else but the tag team. You notice that, right? So, in which case, once again, I ask you guys, who do you want to see win the Money in the Banks? Between both the women and the men. 
Let me lay it down for you. First up, on the men's side, we have AJ Styles, we have Rey Mysterio, as well as Aleister Black representing Raw. While on the SmackDown side, we just saw these three men go to war with each other. King Corbin, Otis, and Daniel Bryan. Who's your top three picks? You, Mikey? Mine says Otis, Daniel Bryan, and Rey Mysterio. There you go. I know your number one pick right now. Chris, is AJ Styles. Who's your second and third? Alistair Black and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan? Okay. I said Alistair Black and uh, Daniel Brook. Daniel Brook? Oh, you want her to win? Ah. Yeah. What about you, uh, Andre? Uh, Otis, Daniel Bryan, and Mysterio. Nice. Good pick. For me, I definitely want to see Otis win. That would be fun. Don't be surprised. He gets a bigger, bulkier ladder. He probably pulls out the uh, Big Show's ladder. We haven't seen that in years. Decades. He might even have something else. They might uh, have that thing we saw on AEW, that lift. He might get a lift, <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, as far as that, I would definitely want to see Rey Mysterio because he, he would definitely need this, as well as the fact that Aleister Black would definitely be a good one. Ooh, speaking of high-flying... We had Jeff Hardy. Why the hell is that not mentioned in here? Dab gone. Jeff Hardy makes his return to SmackDown uh, after his four weeks hiatus of having each and every week showcase his videos while Sheamus is constantly being picky about him being mentioned while his matches are going. So before he even comes out, Jeff Hardy feels him. He feels the presence of Sheamus. He says, get out here. So he gets him. Sheamus says the same damn things as everybody else. That he's old. He needs to retire. That he's an addict. That he's been in jail. He's a bad example. And that he is, somebody else needs to take the, uh, this spotlight. So he goes and says, well, why don't you come out down here and do it? He comes down there and he's about to throw down and Jeff Hardy gets the one up on him, hitting him not only with the twist of fate. I don't, I forget what the hell they called it when Jeff Hardy first fought King Corbin. Twist of something. Twist yeah. of fury. Twist of fury, something like that. And, nah, they, they called it something else for some reason. Anyway, and then he hit him with the hurricane rock and the swan time bomb. Oh, and he managed to pull out the Whisper in the Wind. Man, I haven't seen that in a long time. Ain't nobody do that but Jeff Hardy. Whisper in the Wind. <laughs> got him good. He got Seamus good. Your thoughts on that, boys? I just hope, I just hope Jeff Hardy puts Seamus in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope Jeff Hardy beats, uh, I hope Jeff, Jeff Hardy wins and shut up Sheamus for good. Okay, so on the women's side, let's see. Oh, the Raw women are definitely going to kick ass. Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Asuka. Oy. And on the SmackDown side, we have Carmella. We have Daniel Brooke, we already heard you, uh, Chris, mentioning that. And who was the last one? Who? Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans. So, who is your top three to win that money in the bank? 
Mikey? Mikey, we're breaking up. We're breaking up. It's always on your end, Mikey. We're breaking up. What the hell? Reconnect, reconnect. Hang up and reconnect. <laughs> okay. So, Chris, what's your top? Uh, on Monday Night Raw? On all six. Oh, dang. Like I said, Lacey Evans. Okay, Lacey Evans and who? The top three. Like I said, Lacey Evans, Dana Brooke, Carmel for SmackDown. Uh, no, I'm saying, who do you want to... Uh, you want all three SmackDown winners? I, I, want, to see, I, 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 want, I want Lacey Evans. Okay. You on... Uh, you, Chris? Yeah, you're having trouble with that third one, huh? Yeah. All right, Andre, what's yours? Uh, Nia Big girl. Lacey Evans. Uh, and Carmella. Carmella. Me, I have to say it. The most ones I want to see win are all on Raw. On Raw. Those three women are intimidating as hell. It'd be nice to see either of those three win and go up against Becky Lynch. That'd be nice. Because Becky Lynch had that title for a while, same as Bailey. So I think Bailey's probably going to lose her title before Becky Lynch because Sasha Banks, whoo, Sasha Banks is eyeing that prize. She's eyeballing it. Sasha Banks is another person I want to see win. Yeah, but she is not in the money in the bank. That's sad. Yeah, she uh, is a loser. She's a, in a losing streak. It's true on that. True on that. Oh, this is another thing I wanted to ask you guys. How do you feel about Akira Tozawa, the Japanese guy? He's had a huge losing streak on Monday Night Raw, but has a winning streak for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship Tournament on NXT. Huh? How is that even possible? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. He's got a loser streak on Raw, winning streak on NXT. Mondays, it, it, it's like Garfield. I hate Mondays. And Wednesdays, I like hump day. <laughs> We're going to this out. <laughs> oh, damn. Shoot, man. And who the hell are these uh, Mexicanos with the Max? Trying to take away all our Spanish wrestlers. What the hell? Too bad they ain't going on Raw. We got three of them right now with Zelina Vega. <laughs> and Finn Balor is going to jump somebody. Bray Wyatt? Oh, yeah. Bray Wyatt and uh, Braun Strowman's. That was another thing that WWE is not covering. What the hell, WWE? What the hell is wrong with them? They're messing up. Somebody's not doing their job. I'm, we're having a hard time remembering everything that happened so much within the two hours. Damn. In which case... Braun Strowman just looked at him and said that, uh, uh, yeah, he is home. And he's keeping this title. Say bye. I'll see you this Sunday. <laughs> no, he's got the universal title belt, which he beat Goldberg at WrestleMania for. Oh, okay, yeah. 
And now Bray Wyatt, the Fiend. Actually, we don't even think we're going to see the Fiend. It looks like we're going to see Bray Wyatt. Mr. Roberts' Neighborhood uh, wanna be get up. Mr. Rogers, there you go. May you rest in peace. Anyway, so on 205, damn, somebody's in. On 205 Live, it was Oni Lorcan giving, uh, hosting the show with his top wrestling match as well as his favorite wrestling match in the past. So there's nothing else to cover on that. Anything else you want to cover on WWE, boys? The names? Yeah, there were a couple of names I forgot. Yeah, the 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 names from NXT. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Who was that Spanish chick that got in the way of Zia Lee and Chelsea Green? That's Aaliyah. 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 And. Trying to remember. Actually, I can go. No, I can't. Not on this. Uh, my brain went. <laughs> I can't think of uh, all the people. I know I forgot three names. <gasps> I know for that one. That was the one I was trying to get. So, Aaliyah was the woman who got her face smashed by Zia Lee, the Chinese woman wrestler. And now we're thinking that um, Robert Stone is looking to expand his company by having her. But she ran away. That's the issue. She ran away. Uh, Joy Grace. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, what was your thoughts on Killer Cross now being brand as Kyrian Cross and Scarlet? You remember a movie, an animated movie called Heavy Metal back in the day? Yeah, I remember that. I instantly thought of that when their entrance came out. Damn. I, I don't recall that. Damn. That was awesome. Scarlet Can was sick when she came out. It looked like a, a haunted, hung up movie. Yeah, it did. It did. God damn. Mm. That was uh, wh that was one of the best entrants. They still had the fog in the match, man. They still had the fog in the match. That was creepy as hell. That match was literally foggy. Because <laughs> there was fog. The smoke machine was uh, overpowering. <laughs> damn. Can I get enough of that? So, with that said, I think that's it for this video. Y'all ready? Uh, hold on. What else? You forgot to mention uh, Drake Atlas. Drake Atlas. Yeah. What match was he in? He was in he was in match with Kushida. Koshida, ah, oh, that's right. He was part, that was the other guy in the Cruiserweight Classic. I forgot the other guy's name. The other one that fought was Akira Tozawa versus Jack Gallagher. And then we had Dexter Loomis help out Velveteen Dream with Undisputed Era, blah, blah, blah. We had Finn Balor and Cameron Grimes. It was a third person's name. We had Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae with Dominic Dozovich. See, I, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. When Dexter Loomis helped them out, but it didn't help too much. 
Yeah, we hit the 30 minute mark, boys. Let's go ahead and end this. You ready? Yeah. First up, shout out to our boys, Xavier Hill, who's working right now at this hour. Yeah, damn of a bitch. And a shout out to Mike Henry and Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube pages will be in the description down below, as always. And a remaining shout out to Chris Petrie, T Money, Renee, Farrell, and Delvin. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button, like the content, hit that notification bell for the next Heaven's Monsters podcast. Peace out, y'all.